Priscilla Block. Let me tell you, if you have known anything about country music, if you have followed TikTok, Instagram, she is blowing up. The artist to watch, I feel like, on every list of every publication. Let's welcome Priscilla to Connect with Country Now. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? So good. Thank you for having me today. Oh, of course. Um, let me tell you, from the moment I first saw you on socials, I was like, I got to be this girl's best friend. You are amazing, and I just love your personality. You're so relatable, and I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you. I'm I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. Well, let's get into it because we have so many things to talk about. Um, so for those that don't know, so uh, you started on TikTok last year and you exploded. I mean, everyone was downloading your music. You went to number one on iTunes. Let's just talk about the whirlwind year that you've had. Um, do you still feel like you have to pinch yourself? <laughs> yes, honestly, every single day. I mean, I, you know, it's, I've been in Nashville for six, seven years now, you know, just kind of doing the grind and and doing everything that I thought that I, I needed to do and watching it kind of all have its moment to happen has been so overwhelming. And I'm just, I mean, I'm pinching myself every day. Like it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's like a true I mean, oh, it seems like it's overnight, but you've been here for so long grinding it out. Like what made you decide to join TikTok? Like what, did you see that as an outlet for your music or did you just join because it was quarantine and everyone was, everyone was on TikTok? Yeah, it really, there was no um, thought process behind joining and it being an app for me. I mean, I literally thought it was a dancing app. Yeah. I thought it was like, I'd get on there and dance and impersonate the Kardashians. Like that's what I was on TikTok to do. That's what I thought my, my reason for being on there was. And, um, one day I was like, I wonder, I wonder what, like, if I could post my own music here and kind of just started doing that, started posting original songs and cover songs. And it, really just like, I just started seeing it grow. And um, I mean, it seemed so fast, you know, there, it was crazy to me that there was a place, an app that could reach as many people as I was being able to reach, especially during a pandemic, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Well, it definitely, uh, you know, worked to your advantage. So your song went number one, then you, I'm sure got multiple offers, but you signed with UMG Nashville, which is an awesome label. I mean, you've got label mates like Keith Urban, Luke Bryan. I mean, what is that even like? It honestly has been insane. And, you know, I, I was kind of scared to sign a record deal, you know, um, yeah, because I have been going at this for a little bit. And I think my biggest fear was not being able to to do things the way that I want to do them. And UMG has been so supportive. I mean, they're like, Priscilla, what do you want to do and how do you want to do it and how can we help? And so it's kind of just been like the dream team. Well, I think that's awesome. I, I think like just your authenticity really shines through everything you do. And I think that that's what will make you, you know, just connect with, you know, so many fans on so many levels. Um, so the EP, your debut EP is coming out tonight at midnight. Let's talk about this project. I listened to it yesterday. And once again, like, I can't think of another word to describe, but just authentic. Like, it just seems like you're the girl next door, my friend who I'm listening to her life, like unfold on these songs. Can you just talk about writing from your heart and pouring it out there? Yeah, these songs, you know, a lot of people say, you know, what, what were you thinking when you were writing for this project. And I really wasn't writing for a project. I mean, these songs were songs that I wrote with some of my best friends in Nashville. And it's, it was me just writing what was on my brain that day and whatever I needed to write at the time. And so choosing these songs, I feel like they describe so much of who I am and why I am the way that I am. You know, you got the sass, you got the trash and you got the sad. So it's all there. For people to dive in a little bit deeper. 
I love that. Um, so let's see. One of the songs, uh, Wish You Were the Whiskey. And I saw your Instagram post, which I'm sure was also on TikTok, but how you had originally written it for Jason Aldean. And when I listened to it, I do see that that could be a song. I feel like that he would maybe you know, navigate towards. So you released it on your own. Can you talk about the response to the song and, you know, your initial thoughts of potentially getting it to Jason Aldean? Yeah, we wrote that song literally like two and a half years ago. So I've had this song for a while. And at that point, nothing was happening with any of our careers. Me, my songwriters, they were artists, they're artists too. So we were like, what if we try and just switch it up a little and write a song for somebody else? Well, immediately with this song, we were like, Jason Aldean. Like, I love Jason Aldean. Like, maybe we could get it to him. So obviously, I mean, I couldn't make a call. I don't have his number or we didn't know anybody in the industry. So it's kind of been a song that I've held on to, like hoping that maybe he would hear it one day. Well, that never happened. So I decided that I was just going to cut it myself because I love the song so much. Yeah, it is a good song. And I will say, I'm just going to put it into the universe that now that it's out, I think you guys should do a collaboration on this song. So when that happens, we can look back to this interview and say that, like, this is where it started. <laughs> I know. I I honestly hope that that maybe he will hear this song and we could maybe collab on it. I mean, how cool would that be to do a duet with Jason Aldean? Oh, it will happen. I'm calling it. I'm totally calling it now. Um, So let's see. Let's talk about Just About Over You. So this song's super personal to you. The music video is very personal to you. And this is the one that like, essentially, like, would you say that this is the one that got you the record deal? Like, this is the one that kind of started it all. Yeah, this was the song that, changed it all for me. And, um, you know, it's funny, you hear people say like, oh, just, you just haven't gotten that song yet. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I got a ton of songs. What do y'all need? Um, but it really, it, it was the song that, that truly changed everything for me. And I, I wrote the song with two of my girlfriends over FaceTime last July. And within three weeks of writing the song, I, released it. Um, it had its moment on social media and blew up and, um, it was crowdfunded for me to go into the studio and record it. So fans across the world put their own money behind me recording the song, which was so special. And then, you know, the day after we released it, it was number one on all genre iTunes charts. I'm sitting next to Nicki Minaj and I'm like, who let me in? So I think at that point was when it almost like shook the industry in a, in a way because everyone's like, who is this girl? Like, why don't we know her? And that's really when all the calls started coming in. And I was able to like tell my story and be like, I've been here for seven years, but here we are. Let's go. Let's do it. Well, I just think, you know, everything's meant to be, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of artists, like they call it a 10 year town. Well, for you, it's a seven year town, but I feel like, you know, you wouldn't be who you are today, right? Like if it didn't take, you know, if you didn't go through these things, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it makes moments like this so special. I mean, to think that a year ago, less than a year ago, I was moving out of my apartment because I couldn't afford my rent. I had no clue. I mean, you want to talk about rock bottom? That was me less than a year ago. Wow. And I didn't think I was going to be able to do music. I didn't know what my life looked like. And to think that here we are now, it's like, dang, like you just never know like what tomorrow is going to bring and like just what's after maybe rock bottom. So you just got to keep pushing. Yeah. Well, what like encouraged you? I mean, gosh, that must've been really hard. Like thinking you're not going to make your rent. Like what made you keep going? Well, I will say I had to move out of my apartment because there was, and I wasn't making my rent. I'm still paying it off to be honest. Um, I was like four months behind maybe. And, um, gosh, it was, it was like the biggest I failed moment. And, um, I think I've always like my, my parents have kind of just always raised us. Like, I mean, I remember being like 
little, little, and my mom looking at me and she's like, we're not allowed to have excuses. And that's always stuck with me. Like I've never allowed myself to have an excuse. And that's amazing though. I mean, shoot, that's a good way to look at life though. I feel like, and that probably that rate, the way you were raised kept you going. So. Yeah. And it's, it really is that, that thing in my head. And I was like, all right, well, what else do I want to do? Nothing. So like, pedal to the metal. I can't, I can either mope because I can't play shows or I can take this energy and throw it into reaching people however I can. And that just happened to be how things kind of took off for me. And I'm so thankful for the time that I was able to, to take for that. Well, we can all take some advice from that uh, experience. So let's go back to the EP. So what was the most meaningful song, would you say, on the project and why? I think the most meaningful one probably would be, I mean, it's hard to not say just about Over You because that song will forever be the most important song ever to me. Um, But I think sad girls do sad things. And um, I think it was really important for me to put out this song. I, honestly, it wasn't even going to be on the EP. And kind of last minute, I was like, I think I want to put sad girls on there. And uh, it writing that song was almost like the forgiveness that I needed to give myself for going through just like a really hard time of life. And um, I needed to write that song for myself. And I would just listen back to it and listen back to it. And I was like, you know, I think there's a lot of people. I mean, we're already hard on ourselves in general, but I think that there's a lot of girls that need to hear this song. And um, so I think that's one of the most important songs on the EP for me. I could definitely see that after listening um, yesterday for sure. Um, and I also have to say, I, I love, I bet you want to know. That's a jam. Um, okay, so lots of exciting things also to talk about. But before we get into what's coming up, I just have to ask one more thing about Dollywood, this song that you wrote. Okay, the play on words is genius, first of all. And um, you released it on Dolly's birthday. So will we ever be able to hear any more of this song? Oh my gosh, that picture is amazing, by the way. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe. Um, I'm a big Dolly Parton fan. That's like me channeling the big hair and the big boobs. Like, I just love me some Dolly. Um, I don't know. I don't, we'll see what the next projects kind of look like. Um, but I feel like I would love for this song to kind of have its moment and put it out there for everyone to hear. I think so. Um Dolly's incredible and like it has inspired obviously so many young artists. So I think she would get a kick out of that song. So if you haven't seen it, you can go to Priscilla's it's, it's on your TikTok, I'm sure. Um, and Instagram. Yeah, it's on, it's on both. Okay. So you can go there and check it out, but Dolly would. So um, a, another incredible moment. So we've got your EP coming out and then you're going to make your Opry debut this weekend. Let's talk about that. That's got to be just like such a special moment. And we have the video here where you were touring the Opry. Let's talk about this moment here. Oh my gosh. Well, I was like basically set up. They told me that they wanted me to go make some TikToks at the Opry. So I'm like, I go and tour it, whatever. And I, I literally, I didn't think that they were going to ask me like, Hey, you want to come back like in a month and do this? Well, anyways, we get to the stage and it's like, Hey, Priscilla, it's Craig Morgan. And I'm like, And I'm like looking around, I'm like, is he here? But he's here. Well, anyways, they asked me to make my debut and it like literally took me like a second to even, it's like one of those things like, did I, did I just hear that right? You know? And, um, you know, it was so special. I mean, as somebody that sings country music, I think anybody that sings, sings country music, your dream is to play the Grand Ole Opry. And when I was little and I would visit Nashville or think of Nashville, when I thought of Nashville, I thought of the Grand Ole Opry. So 
it's so exciting that I get to step in that circle and I'm terrified. Oh goodness. Well, we had Matt Stell on before and I told him that a fellow Bush beer lover was coming on and I asked him to give you some advice. And he just said to soak in every moment that you're there because it goes by in a flash. So just take that with you when you're there. And I have to know, because um, I love your style and your fashion. Have you picked out what you're wearing? Was that like a big decision? (laughs) Everyone keeps asking me this and I am like, uh, thank you for saying that you like my style because it, I feel like it's like usually like t-shirts and well it's so you cool. though and that's thank what I you. love like you are just like you could be my BFF like you're Aww. so real and I love it but I was like I gotta ask her what I, she's wearing <laughs> I haven't really I haven't thought of it I've thought of the shoes that I'm wearing okay. but like, other than that it's probably gonna be like a pair of black jeans that fit me well that day and I don't know. Whatever, whatever shirt kind of catches my eye. Okay. Well, I'm sure it will be very special. And then, um, let's see, tonight is your live stream to celebrate the EP release. So fans can watch at 9 PM, um, on Facebook. So tell us like what they can expect from this show. Will you be playing all the songs on the EP? Yes, I will be playing all of the songs on the EP. Um, Bush is sponsoring it, which is super exciting. Um, But yeah, you know, y'all are going to be able to really like dive in with me on why I wrote these songs and what this EP means to me and just kind of like the story of this, my life taking off. And um, it's just, I'm really excited. I'm going to be playing full band. So people will be able to kind of see what like a live show is going to look like or feel like, even though it's virtual, but it's just, I don't know, it's going to be a moment to really bring together all of the people that have believed in this and kind of been, been rooting, rooting for me. Awesome. Well, fans can watch on Priscilla's Facebook tonight at 9 p.m. Central. So before we let you go, we're going to play a little game and we're calling it. I bet you want to know Priscilla Block. I love it. (laughs) Okay, so these are just some fun questions and just to get to know you more and you can kind of just like a little rapid fire uh, question set question session. So first TikTok. First TikTok, I think was, oh, my first TikTok was me singing about drinking during Christmas vacation with my family. Okay. Uh, Favorite hometown food spot? Cookout, duh, North Carolina. First live performance, do you remember it? Church. (laughs) Okay, Okay. that counts. Um, What's your favorite musical memory? My favorite musical memory this far um, was probably playing at the Ryman. Who is your biggest musical influence? Taylor Swift. What's your most viral TikTok? Probably me singing about PMS. (laughs) Worst job? Dog sitting. Ooh. Beer it's or like whiskey? To to people. <laughs> Wait, what? I said that's usually shocking to people because I'm such a dog lover, but don't get me started. Uh oh. Okay, that's for the next interview. We'll yeah, that's that next interview. <laughs> okay, beer or whiskey? Ooh, probably beer because I can pace myself a little better. You know. Okay. Nickname? Oh gosh, got a bunch. Prissy, Prissy Pot, Prissy P. Awesome. Describe your EP in three words. Sass, trash, sad. Dream duet partner. Um, Jason Aldean. Keep it going. We'll keep it out there in the, in the universe. Uh, first celebrity crush. Luke Bryan. Ooh. Must have makeup products bronzer uh last one who's your biggest fashion inspiration billy eilish love it all right (laughs) well 
Thank you so much, Priscilla. Everyone can pick up her self-titled. It has six songs, her self-titled EP out at midnight and watch her live show tonight. And we will be rooting you on. And I cannot wait until things are normal and we can meet in person. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for having me today. And I'm so excited for you guys to hear these songs. Yes. All right. Well, have a great show tonight, Priscilla. Priscilla. And everyone can go follow her and be sure to stream or download her EP.